Hello Junior Rangers! I'm Ranger Emily and I work at Manhattan Project National Historical Park in Washington. I'm going to go ahead and remove my mask so you can hear me better. Today I am at Leslie Groves Park in Richland, Washington. Leslie Groves Park is named after General Leslie Groves. General Groves was an engineer and the person in charge of the Manhattan Project. For today's pop-up play day video we're going to be talking about the engineers and scientists of the Manhattan Project. During World War II, scientists, engineers, and mathematicians made huge advancements in STEM. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. People from around the world invented new technology during World War II so they could win the Great War. The British invented radar systems and computers to crack secret German codes. Germans improved rocket technology. Here in the United States, the Manhattan Project scientists engineers and mathematicians advanced nuclear science. Experts were not the only people to use STEM skills during World War II. Soldiers and factory workers used STEM to build tanks and submarines, to read maps, to understand radar signals, and to navigate ships and airplanes. Many famous scientists across the United States worked on the Manhattan Project. Most of the Manhattan Project scientists worked in Chicago, Illinois, and Los Alamos, New Mexico. Enrico Fermi, an Italian physicist, lived in the United States and worked for the Manhattan Project at the Chicago Metallurgic Lab. In 1942, Fermi and his team created the world's first nuclear reactor called the Chicago Pile 1. Manhattan Project scientists and engineers took the lessons learned from Fermi's lab to build the world's first full-scale nuclear reactor, named the B Reactor. The B Reactor was built on the Hanford Reservation in Washington for the Manhattan Project. Today the B Reactor is part of Manhattan Project National Historical Park. You will be able to visit and tour the B Reactor with your family and friends once it reopens. Another scientist, J. Robert Oppenheimer, was the person in charge of the Los Alamos team of scientists that researched, designed, and built the first atomic bombs. Oppenheimer is often called the father of the atomic bomb. Most of the scientists and engineers who worked on the Manhattan Project were men. Leona Woods Marshall Libby was the only woman officially working as a scientist at Hanford. Engineers were very important to the Manhattan Project, and they outnumbered Manhattan Project scientists 10 to 1. Engineers study how and why things work, they design and build solutions to big and small problems. Engineers designed the buildings to produce plutonium. The B reactor at Hanford was the first full-size nuclear reactor to produce plutonium. Because the B reactor was the first of its kind, it was a big achievement for the engineers and scientists who designed and built it. Most of the engineers who worked on the Manhattan Project worked for either the Army Corps of Engineers or the DuPont Corporation. The Army Corps of Engineers are the engineers who worked for the United States Army to build public works like dams and bridges. The DuPont Corporation is a private company that specialized in chemical engineering during the World War II era. General Groves asked the DuPont Corporation and the Army Corps of Engineers to engineer and build the Manhattan Project. Engineers and scientists had to work together to make the Manhattan Project successful. It was the job of the DuPont engineers to take the Manhattan Project scientist ideas and make them come to life. Crawford Greenwald worked for DuPont as a chemical engineer. It was his job to take the scientists' ideas and have the DuPont engineers create the blueprints for the projects and to solve any engineering problems. For example, Greenwald took the idea of the B reactor from the Manhattan Project scientist and worked with the DuPont engineers to design and build the B reactor. Construction on the Hanford B reactor began in 1943. DuPont hired over 50,000 workers from around the country to work at the Hanford site. By the end of World War II, DuPont and the Army Corps of Engineers had engineered nuclear reactors, hundreds of miles of roads and railroads, housing for thousands of people, and groundbreaking technology. Civil engineers built the Grand Coulee Dam and Bonneville Dam, which produced the power for the Manhattan Project. The hydroelectricity, the power created by the Grand Coulee Dam, was also used to produce aluminum for World War II ships and planes. The American Society of Civil Engineers considers the Grand Coulee Dam to be one of the seven civil engineering wonders of the United States. 
there were many different types of engineers who worked on the Manhattan Project. You can learn more about the different types of engineers, including nature's engineers, beavers, in your pop-up Playdays Passport. Remember to download and complete this week's Passport activities so you can earn your Junior Ranger pin or patch. Our friend Diana from Tattoo Greenway is excited to tell you about nature's engineers. Check out Diana's video about beavers on the City of Richland's website. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you in two weeks for our pop-up Playdays video where we're going to talk about building a community and alphabet houses.